welcome back to my video if you are new here welcome to my channel my name is Satina Styles with the Z and in today's video I am going to give you a few tips to help you grow your hair now this is a requested video so I'm here to give you my tips on how I grow my hair and the things that I do to grow my hair now I have my little iPad right here for my notes so let's get right into the video so my first tip is do not use heat in your hair. I repeat, do not use heat in your hair. And if you absolutely have to use heat, just try not to use it very often. If you're someone who likes to put heat in your hair and maybe you put heat in your hair every day, maybe try challenging yourself and doing it once a month. And then from there, maybe try challenging yourself and doing it once a quarter. And from there, try doing it only twice a year once a year and then maybe go a full year with no heat so these are my heating tools right here mm -mm, we're not using these babies we're gonna get rid of them i only put heat in my hair typically once or twice a year three times is max but that's rare usually my hair is curly most of the year i'll straighten it either at the top of the year and then i'll straighten it in the middle of the year or I'll straighten it in the middle of the year and then at the end of the year it just depends and what I'm doing that is usually just for a length check um, or I just want to switch up my style a little bit so I don't really straighten my hair you won't really see me with my hair straight often so that is a great way to keep your hair from being dry and damaged with heat um, if you do have to straighten your hair, I suggest that you use a heat protector. This is the one that I like to use. It's a dry styling heat protector spray. Um, and it's good for up to 450 Fahrenheit heat protection. Now this is by Oscar Blondie. This is one of my favorite ones. I also like to use the Tresemme one, but that's usually if my hair is already wet because it's a wet um, heat protector. This is more of a dry heat protector. Um, and it smells really good. So definitely always use a heat protector if you must straighten your hair or put any type of heat in it. But all in all, try to avoid the heat. So the next tip is massage your scalp. Massaging your scalp is really great because it stimulates the blood flow and helps with hair growth. Now this is a tool that I like to use. It's like a scalp massager and it also stimulates my scalp. So I like to just put this on the top of my head and just give myself a good old massage. I know that there are other type of massagers, um, but you can, if you don't have this, I actually bought this at Bed Bath & Beyond for I wanna say $5.99 or something like that. But if you don't have one of those, you can also use your hands take your hands and maybe even a little bit of oil um, and then just go ahead in circular motions and just massage your scalp all the way from front to back. Do that for about a few minutes. Another technique that is pretty popular is called the inversion method. And the inversion method, what you do is invert your hair, basically hold your head upside down for minutes while massaging your scalp. Sometimes people use it with oil, sometimes without. Um, so that is something that you can also do to stimulate hair growth. But massaging your scalp overall is something you should try to do on a daily basis. If you do this every day, it will help to continue to circulate the blood flow and it will ultimately make your hair grow really fast. So my next tip is to deep condition your hair every single week at least once a week deep condition your hair now i do have a video on a homemade uh, deep conditioner which i'll link below so that way you can check it out but basically you can use any type of deep conditioner you can make your own like i did in that video or you can just buy a deep conditioner here i have a few of my um favorites that i've been using lately i do try to switch it out so that my hair doesn't get too used to the deep conditioner and that it can still continue to work so every now and then i'll buy a new one or just switch out the ones that i have so i'll switch um which one i use every week so here i have the giovanni ultra moist deep deep 
moisturizer hair mask. This not only smells really good, but it really deep conditions my hair. And I'll usually do this while I'm in the shower. I'll leave it on for, I'll wash my hair first when I, as soon as I get in the shower, and then I'll leave this on for the duration of my shower, and it depends on what else I have to do. Usually I'm shaving or whatnot, so I'll usually have this um, in my hair anywhere between five to 20 minutes. So this is really good. Another one I like to use is Shea Moisture, and if you have curly hair, natural hair, wavy hair, you know that Shea Moisture is the plug. I go to Shea Moisture for a lot of my hair care, um, but this one specifically is an anti-breakage strengthening mask, and I like this because typically in the winter, my hair gets really dry and it's very prone to breakage. So this mask is really good. And usually I'll keep this on between like 30 minutes and sometimes I'll do it overnight if I'm really just not trying to wash it out and my hair is really dry. I'll just do it overnight. So deep condition at least once a week, you will notice your hair will be more moisturized, it'll be more soft and shiny, and it won't break because it'll keep that moisture in, which will help it to grow and continuing with keeping your hair deep conditioned another type of way to deep condition your hair is with oil now this specifically is the dr. miracles daily grow oil this is something you can use every day it recommends that you use it in the morning at night twice a day um, I don't use this every single day but I do make my very own oil treatment and I'll so here I'm just showing you how I make my very own oil treatment. Um, and this is something I also do on a weekly basis. Typically for my oil treatments, when I put it in, I use it overnight. Um, one, because I'm lazy and I don't wanna have to wait hours to wash it out. But if you're pressed for time, you can always just leave it in at least for an hour and then wash it out. So a weekly oil treatment is good and you can make your own oil treatments you don't have to buy them they do different brands do have them in the stores now for you to buy them but you can make one one of my favorite concoctions is to use olive oil and castor oil and I'll put a little bit of rosemary oil or tea tree oil um, in there and I'll just give it a shake and put it in my hair sometimes I'll use um, coconut oil sometimes I'll use jojoba oil argan oil Moroccan oil Whatever type of oil that you have, grapeseed oil is also good. Whatever type of oils that you have, um, just make sure you use whatever works best for your hair, but do it at least once a week. that your hair will grow really fast if you will just challenge yourself to do oil treatment once a week for about a month you'll notice that your hair will grow because it'll be moisturized and it'll be really shiny and your hair won't be dry at all
next tip is to do protein treatments on your hair. Now, protein treatment is very important because basically the protein is what will help to restore the keratin properties back into your hair, which will restore your hair, especially if you have damaged hair, and it will give your hair much needed strength. Um, our hair is naturally made up of keratin, but with manipulation, especially with dyeing our hair and putting heat in our hair, we naturally lose that keratin. So the protein will just help to put those keratin properties back into our hair and help our hair become more strong and healthy. So this is recommended to do once a month. It's not recommended that you do protein treatments more often than once a month um, just because you don't want to weaken your hair with too much protein. Um, so a few methods that I like to use is the most infamous, which most of you guys probably have already heard of this product, but it's called the Afogee Two-Step Protein Treatment. And um, I, you can get the little individual packages where um, you just use whenever you need it, but I ended up getting the bottles so that way I can use it at home. Um, and this will definitely help to stop and prevent breakage from your hair. It will strengthen your hair. And I will say it does not smell good. It doesn't. It stinks really bad. And you have to be careful when using this because this is the protein treatment itself. So you apply it to your hair. And then once it's applied, you let it dry. Typically, you sit under a dryer or use your blow dryer to help make it dry faster. If you don't have any of those things, you um, let it air dry. But that takes a while, a long while, especially if you have really thick hair. So it's recommended that you use a blow dryer or um, sit under a hooded dryer. But basically, once your hair becomes dry, you cannot touch it or manipulate your hair in any type of way. Because if you do, your hair is literally so hard that you can like break it off. Like literally take your hair and like break it off because this stuff gets really hard. So um, after that, you use the balancing moisturizer, which helps to restore the moisture back into your hair because that's what you ultimately want to do after protein treatment. It's essential to moisturize your hair afterwards because you would think that the protein treatment is supposed to give you moisture, but it doesn't. It makes your hair extremely dry, which seems counterintuitive to the whole strengthening your hair thing, but it's a balance. You use the protein and then you use some type of moisture. And you can also make your very own protein treatment, which I like to do. So I will do that by using an egg. And you can use, this is just a brown organic cage-free egg because that's how I like my eggs. But you can use any type of egg that you have. Um, you can mix it with a banana. You can mix it with honey, olive oil. You can mix it with um, an avocado, um, vinegar. Just any way to be able to do a DIY protein treatment on your hair. You can experiment with different ingredients depending on your hair needs. But these are my two favorite ways to do my protein treatment. My next tip is to opt for sulfate-free shampoos. This is one that I like to use from Shea Moisture. It's the low porosity, and as you can see, I'm basically out of this. Um, but it is a sulfate-free, color-safe shampoo. Color-safe is only necessary if you have color-treated hair, like I do, um, even though it's faded out. But I still like to use this. Also, it's important that you do not wash your hair every single day. Like, I don't wash my hair every day. I wash my hair once a week. Sometimes I push it to twice a week, but I co-wash very often. So, the less that you wash your hair, the less that your hair will be prone to being dry. Now, if you have really oily hair, this can be something that's really hard for you. So, I'd say instead of maybe washing your hair every day, try it every other day or every three days. Um, but you'll definitely notice a difference. You'll see more oil reproduction and that way it'll help to grow your hair faster if you're not constantly stripping it with sulfates and drying your hair out with shampoos. An alternative to shampoo altogether is baking soda. So you may or may not have heard of the baking soda shampoo method. So what you do is take three parts baking soda and three times the amount of water. So say if you take three scoops of baking soda, you'll want to take nine scoops of water and scoops or teaspoons, tablespoons, however you want to measure it out. 
um, and basically baking soda will not only to help cleanse your scalp but it will also help to get rid of dandruff if you're suffering with dandruff or if you have really oily hair um, so baking soda is amazing for shampooing your hair or using it as a shampoo alternative after doing a baking soda rinse it's also a good idea to use apple cider vinegar as a hair rinse now the way that you use this is you'll use two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar to a cup of water so you don't want to put too much um, and you'll use the apple cider vinegar after you shampooed your hair but before you condition so it'll be like an in-between step between shampoo and conditioner so you'll shampoo your hair do the apple cider vinegar that's diluted in water you'll rinse your hair let it sit in your hair for about two to three minutes while massaging your scalp just to help work it in there and then you'll rinse it out and condition now if you're afraid of the smell it actually goes away especially if you use a really good conditioner that has a good smell to it it'll go away um, but the, the smell doesn't linger so it's never been a problem for me once you rinse it out it goes the, the smell goes away but this is really great for helping your hair if you have oily hair if you have dandruff if you have any scalp issues um, also just to give your hair shine and moisture and it helps to strengthen your hair so this is one of my holy grail secret type tips so I'm giving you the tips and also on the secret tips I have another one and that is cinnamon you might be like what are you talking about this is a hair video not a cooking video I know so what I like to do I don't do it very often but I'll do it every now and then if I feel that I have a lot of buildup on my scalp and I really want to get in there and get it out the baking soda also helps to get rid of product buildup um, but the cinnamon does wonders the cinnamon will help to stimulate the follicles and you can actually feel the sensation it's like a tingling sensation so basically I'll take a few scoops of this maybe about two tablespoons of this and then I'll mix it with some olive oil um, and then I'll just put it in my scalp uh, before I shampoo I'll put it in my scalp and just massage my scalp and I'm telling you your hair will grow like crazy and your hair will just feel like you can feel it growing instantly maybe not instantly but you get what I'm saying so this is another secret holy grail tip you're welcome. The next tip is to protect your hair. And by protecting your hair, I mean doing a few things. For one, after you wet your hair and you dry your hair, do not, I repeat, do not dry your hair with a towel. It will cause frizz for one, and also it weakens the hair shaft and it can cause breakage in your hair. The best alternative is to use a t-shirt a cotton t-shirt but sometimes that doesn't really soak up the water in your hair very well so what I like to use is a microfiber towel now you can get these pretty much anywhere you can get them at CVS, Target, um, Walmart probably sells in Marshalls you can get this Macy's anywhere everybody sells them actually actually I've seen them at the dollar store before as well so you can get them pretty much anywhere. The microfiber towel helps to soak up the water, but then it also doesn't break your hair and it doesn't leave your hair frizzy. So opt for microfiber towel. Next, you want to use a satin pillowcase. This is like my ultimate favorite thing to do. Not only does it just feel super silky and soft on your skin, it also helps to protect your hair because I used to notice growing up waking up and my hair would be caught in my pillowcase and I never knew why because what it is is the cotton or polyester or whatever type of pillowcase that material you use that isn't satin or silk your hair pulls out it pulls your hair out so I switched over to using satin pillowcases and ever since I have I noticed that my hair doesn't get pulled out in the middle of the night or when I wake up I don't see my hair in my pillowcase so switching to a satin or a silk pillowcase is definitely key unless you use a satin bonnet 
which is something that I also use, and that is another key thing. In addition to protective styles, it's a good idea to braid your hair up at night um, or to put it up in piney, pineapple just to make sure your hair is out of the way and you're not manipulating your hair by doing all the tossing and turning at night. Braiding your hair is really, really good to help to protect and preserve your hair. In addition to that, keeping your ends moisturized. I like to use shea butter at night. I'll just take a little bit of shea butter and just apply it to my ends and then put it up in my pineapple and I go to sleep. <laughs> and lastly, for protecting your hair, you want to use hair ties that don't pull your hair out. So you know the hair ties that have the little metal don't use those. Those are so bad for your hair. Every time I use, used to use those, I don't use them now, but when I used to use those, I would notice that my hair would be pulled out. Chunks of my hair, chunks of my hair would be caught in that little metal thing. So don't use that. Try to use a hair tie like this, one that doesn't have any of the metal, um, any of the metal, I don't even know what you call it, the metal thing. <laughs> that's on the hair tie um, this is kind of almost like a really thick tight but I bought this little these little um, active they're the active hair ties to get at Target um, I always keep one on my arm always because you never know when you have to put your hair up also the satin um, hair ties these are really great too I use these when I am going to sleep at night and I put my hair up in a pineapple or just around the house or whatever my hair out whatsoever so my next tip is to get haircuts only if they're needed and by that don't cut if you're trying to grow your hair it's important not to cut your hair often um, and I don't mean don't trim the ends or get your hair cut if you feel that your hair is really damaged by all means because once you eliminate that damage then you will help to prevent your hair from splitting which the more your ends are split, the more your hair is not going to grow. So if you've got to get rid of those split ends, go ahead and do so. But don't make it a habit where you're going every three months to get your hair cut because then you won't see the length in your hair growth journey. Um, maybe opt for every six months just to go and get a light dusting of your ends. Um, or you can also do it yourself. So try not to cut your hair too often. My next tip, which is very helpful, but completely optional, is to use hair vitamins. Now, hair vitamins are really good for helping to speed up the process of your hair growth and to give you the proper nutrients that you need in order for your hair to grow. These, for example, are the hair growth pills that I have been using lately. Um, I used to use Strictly Biotin on its own, and this is Biotin um, 5000 MC that I got from Sprouts and I would just take one of these every day. Now the thing about using biotin by itself is you are prone to breaking out. It does tend to break out your skin um, if you have sensitive skin or even if you don't sometimes your skin might break out. Um, so to counteract that it's good to use a B vitamin or use a lower dosage. Five th I don't go above 5,000. Sometimes you can, they have 10,000. I wouldn't do that because my face would probably just break out so bad. Um, but it does make your hair go really, really fast. So biotin strictly on its own. I would suggest pairing it with a B vitamin so that way you don't see as many breakouts when you use this. And another alternative is to use hair, skin, and nail vitamins or just hair vitamins that have other vitamins in it besides biotin. Now this is an empty bottle because I've already gone through one of these already. I really, really love this product and this brand. This is the Sugar Bear Hair Hair Vitamins. Um, and this has biotin, it has folic acid, and vitamin C. And this itself does contain 5,000 MCG of biotin, but it also has other vitamins like vitamin A, um, like I said, vitamin C, vitamin B, folic acid, um, zinc. There's other different vitamins in here that will help with the hair growth process of your hair. It 
also helps to strengthen my nails. I notice my, I usually have really weak nails, but when I'm taking vitamins, my hair, my, my nails are typically very strong. Um, and this is my second bottle that I've started and I'm already about halfway through. So these are really good. You just take two a day. Um, and I will say that it, if you do use hair growth vitamins, it makes your hair grow everywhere, literally everywhere. So unfortunately you can't just seclude it to your scalp, so your hair will go everywhere. Um, so just keep that in mind. But vitamins are a really great way to speed up the process in your hair growth method. Um, if you do want to take biotin, there's also liquid biotin, which I heard works very well because since it's already in the liquid form, it helps to work even more rapidly. So that might be something you might want to try out. So my last tip is the most important tip and that's to make sure that you have a healthy diet. Now when you have a healthy diet, your hair is more likely to grow. And not only will your hair grow, but your insides will feel very amazing. Um, if you have a really healthy diet um, that's rich in fruits and vegetables, proteins and healthy fats, this will definitely help with the production of rapid hair growth. Um, and so by fruits and vegetables, it's really good to get a lot of leafy greens and sweet potatoes are also good for proteins. It's good to eat a lot of fish, specifically salmon and eggs. It's really good healthy proteins. And as far as healthy fats, avocados or any nuts like almonds and walnuts and cashews are really, really good sources of healthy fats. And those things will help to now, that doesn't mean that you have to only eat those things for, for you to see hair growth, um, but it definitely plays a big part in the hair growth production. So consuming less junk food and less processed foods is definitely key, and not to mention drinking lots and lots and lots of water every single day will definitely help to give you hydration and nourish your skin. Now, these are all tips that I like to use. Like I said, you can feel free to customize them however you'd like. Um, these are just things that I know that work with the production of hair growth. You can opt to do more or less. It's up to you. It's also a good idea to try experimenting with products in your kitchen. And by that, I mean trying different remedies like putting avocado in your hair to help your hair become very hydrated. Honey is really good. Lemon's good for lightening your hair. Just try experimenting with different products and see what works best for your hair and your hair type. If you do choose to use any of these tips, just let me know how they work out for you. Or if you have any tips that I didn't mention and maybe I left out on my list, be sure to leave them in the comments below. That way I can maybe try experimenting with some of your tips and incorporate that into my regimen. But all in all, these are the tips that I know that work best for me. They're my tried and true tips. I hope that you try them out and give them a go. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure that you are subscribed to my channel as well. That way I know that you like the videos that I make. If you have any suggestions for different types of videos, make sure you leave that in the comments below as well. And I try to get to making those videos for you because I ultimately want to know the type of videos that you all are interested in and I can bring that to you um, on my channel. So until next time, I will see you in my next video.